Greetings, all good music lovers out there. This is Neven, Atlas Vigilante, and I thought it would be high time for me to do another video. And uh, as you can see, I am uh, sort of, well, I'm doing a new setup for this video, a new view, which I hope will uh, work out fine. And if it does, if it looks good and so on, uh, I'm hoping to uh, use it again in future videos. But uh, the topic of uh, today's video is, uh, well, box sets or one particular box set. And uh, I mean, box sets, don't we all love them? At least I do. I mean, the way the magic for a lot of box sets for me is the way that they encapsulate a particular era for an artist. Um, uh, I mean, either if they do like, uh, le like either if they're a box set that uh, spans the entire uh, the entire career of an artist, or if it's just a box set that uh, just does uh, like a decade or a specific album, which is the case of the box set which I plan to be, uh, which I'll be showing here today, uh, which is. Uh, and I'll also do a unboxing of it because I haven't opened it yet. And uh, uh, this is the from the Alan Parsons project, the Tales of Mystery and Imagination, Edgar Allan Poe, which is of course the classic debut album by the band or uh, project or musical act, however you want to put it. But yeah, definitely one of my favorite groups or and the musical acts of the 70s and the 80s and this box set it came out uh, a few years ago i think it was in uh, 2000 yeah it was in 2016 because the original record was released in uh, uh, 1976 so it, as it says here it is the 40th anniversary edition <coughs> mm. And uh, yes, so it has been a few years since uh, this nice set uh, saw the light of day. So, I mean, a lot of you that already are interested and love Alan Parsons' project, of course, your, your, many of you will probably already be familiar and have, uh, you'll probably already, if you don't own the box, you'll probably already have ha read a lot of reviews. But uh, actually, from what I saw on YouTube, there weren't that many videos showing the box. There was uh, a couple of ones, I believe, but uh, like it, it wasn't a whole lot of them. So I thought, uh, why not? Now, now w when I finally got it, and uh, the reason why I, I just got it, uh, why I haven't got it until now, is because I was waiting for it to drop to a decent price, which it did um, uh, here in Sweden. The, uh, one of the major uh, record distributors uh, and uh, and shops, uh, online shops, Ginza had a really nice sale for this box. So I was quick to grab it before it sold out completely. And uh, I'm very glad that I did so. And I'm guessing that I'll be even happier once uh, we have opened it and checked all of its contents. But yeah, I mean, uh, Alan Parsons' uh, project or Alan Parsons himself, he has, of course, uh, done quite a few reissues over the later years of their uh, discography, but um, it's not like, I mean, all of the albums have been reissued, remastered over the years, but not all of them have, there are just a few of them that have received this nice box set treatment. I know that, uh, well, this one is Mr. Imagination, of course, obviously did, but uh, then they did a 35 anniversary box for uh, Eye in the Sky and also this year, uh, Ammonia Avenue, another great classic album, was also released as a as this type of uh, large box set. Mm, and uh, well, it, it's really nice when classic albums get treatments such as these. But as I said, not all not all of the records by uh, the Alan Parsons Project uh, did receive this treatment, which is perhaps a bit strange. I mean. 
uh, here I am holding, which I showed in a previous video. This is the, I believe this was the, yeah, the 35 anniversary edition of uh, another classic album, The Turn of a Friendly Card. But the, the deluxe edition for this one uh, was just this uh, two CD set, which still uh, contains a lot of extra material, but uh, I'm a little surprised because this is also a classic album. I'm a little surprised why they didn't need to do uh, an entire, I mean, an entire large box set of it. Perhaps there wasn't enough material and, uh, well, yeah, but uh, those are questions that you can always ask yourself when there's an album that you love and you would like to see it get that particular treatment. But to get uh, right into the topic, uh, well, the main focus of this video, this uh, box set then, and it, it contains, uh, which we'll see very soon when I open it, it contains a whole lot of material. There is, I believe, let's see here, it says here, three CD, two LP and a Blu-ray set. And it also includes a 60 page book, uh, a replica of the 1976 press kit, also a poster and sticker. So yeah, all kinds of nice, nice bells and whistles. So however you want to put it as it should be in a, in a great looking and, uh, I mean, great looking iconic box set. Mm. So, uh, yeah, th this record, as uh, many of you, of course, know, well, the original was released in 1976, and then uh, in 87, I believe, uh, let's see here, yeah, 87, it received a reissue, a remix, where they... Uh, added uh, well, Alan Parsons added like some, I believe, some new uh, instrumental parts and also some overdubs, also some narration by the uh, famous actor Orson Welles. Uh, and uh, there is, uh, well, it's debatable. Some people prefer the original. I, I probably am one of those people. But the remix is uh, it, it's it's also a nice listen, a nice uh, it gives a nice variety. Uh, and of course, uh, as it should be, both the original and the remix are featured in this uh, box, as is and as it well as it said here, an entirely new 5.1 surround mix on the yeah it's it's on the blu-ray and of course there is a ton of uh, bonus material as is usual for well a lot of box sets but not least the box sets that uh, the alan parsons project had put out a lot of demos that um, eric wolfson of course one of the main songwriters and vocalists and uh, well the guy that together with Alan Parsons is the band, the Alan Parsons Project. So a lot of his uh, home demos, uh, some sort of early mixes, early versions uh, of uh, a lot of the tracks, rough mixes and so on. So yeah, I mean, if you like this album, and I can pretty much say it right now, even though I haven't uh, gotten through all of the material yet, but, but just from reading the uh, what the entire box contains, it uh, if you like this album and want to delve deeper into it, I mean, this is obviously the place to go. But yeah, to get right into the unboxing itself, I'll prepare my trusty pocket knife here and let's get into it. And The reason why I'm opening it, well, you, you'll see in just a short while what I plan to do here. Mm. All right, let's get this over 
here and then just so yeah when I unbox uh, records or sets such as this uh, at least for the time being I actually like to keep the shrink wrap on I have uh, some more box uh, boxes well uh where i have done the same thing and it keeps the of course the hype sticker is on there also but the, in time perhaps i'll remove it entirely and just save the hype sticker because yeah that's something that uh, i like to do and i know that there are a lot of other record, record collectors out there and box set music collectors that uh, know exactly well that that does the exact same thing so to move right on and take out the contents themselves. Yeah, there is obviously a lot of nice stuff here. There's the box itself. So what to start with here? Let's check this out then. I believe that this is the mentioned 976 press kit replica yeah and you can see the front there and uh, this uh, this like mummified man which also is featured on the record cover uh, the cover itself was designed uh, by uh, storm thorgerson from of course from hypnosis and uh, uh hypnosis fame and who did uh, a lot of uh, great classic record covers for a ton of bands but perhaps he's mostly uh, connected or mo mostly famous for his work with uh, pink floyd but uh, they chose to do this uh, this like man in tape or, or man in like uh, mummified man because uh well, obviously, the the album itself is based on the works of uh, Edgar Allan Poe, as a lot of you uh, know. But uh, so the reason why they did this uh, mummified man is uh, in a lot of Poe's works, there's like this common theme of uh, like being isolated and being buried alive uh, and like being captured, trapped and so on. This... Uh, theme of being so sort of uh, well well yeah isolated and uh, uh, and such so they or Storm Sorgerson he had this idea to do this like uh, mummified man in bandages but uh, what but the entire picture or and here is of course the better picture of him but he's, he isn't actually wrapped in bandages, but he's wrapped in uh, recording tape, which they, well, obviously used in the studio or used back then when they did the analog recordings. Uh, so it, uh, yeah, it is a pretty in interesting idea, pretty in interesting take to connect, of course, the, the musical project, the theme of the music to the, a uh, common topic that uh, that Edgar Allan Poe often dealt with uh, within his works. But to get a bit into the press kit itself, and there is some quite some nice stuff here. I mean, this isn't like stuff that uh, I'll be like reading a whole lot and whatever, and and that. Uh, Obviously, you have to be a huge fan of uh, the band to get the most out, out of all of this stuff. But it, this is definitely interesting. Here it has this... Uh, let's see here. It says something about the radio program. Which I... Yeah, it, uh, it, was, it was some sort of radio show that was prepared to play the album. Also with an interview with... Alan and Eric Wilson, and that, that's the press kit for that. And here is the biography, which was sent out to the press then, uh, which features, uh, of course, the biography of Alan Parsons, but also 
Andrew Powell, who worked with them, the arranger and conductor, and also just the uh, surprisingly short text on Eric Wolfson. But I mean, by the time they did their debut, of course, there weren't. Uh, uh, these guys weren't as famous as, as they came to be. Of course, Alan Parsons already made a name for himself, um, obviously by his work with uh, Pink Floyd and with the Beatles. So, uh, but uh, but yeah, a nice piece of history. And here is here's the mentioned sticker. Of course, continuing the theme with the. Uh, Mummified man. Hmm. Nice indeed. And uh, here we also have uh, a scene. Here we have what I believe is, yeah, that this is obviously the poster. And uh, And I show it in its entirety without messing something up. Let's see. Or perhaps I can. There you have it. The poster which I believe was the well this is obviously a replica but a replica of the promo poster which was used well obviously to promote the album and what does it say here the link between Abbey Road the Beatles Dark Side of the Moon Pink Floyd uh, he ain't heavy slash the air that I breathe the Hollis uh, Ambrosia, Modern Times, uh, Modern Times, Al Stewart, John Miles. Yeah, it says that, that the link bit between all of these uh, works and all these uh, artists is obviously Alan Parsons. Uh, the link between all these works, Alan Parsons and uh, Tales of Mr. Imagination. So obviously they uh, made an effort to just put this together yeah obviously they made an effort to uh, promote to use the history to use the uh, Alan Parsons history of the band that he had worked with to promote and to raise awareness for his uh, the Alan Parsons Project's debut album which was obviously a, a wise choice so this was the promo kit as well as the poster and uh, let's see what we have next and this is obviously the vinyl the project as it says here so here i believe that the vinyl uh the vinyl version just features the original 976 mix, uh, as well as this is a two LP set. Uh, so we have the original mix on the first record, and the second record features uh, well some bonus stuff. It says here some single versions of tracks such as Draven to to One in Paradise, uh, the system of Dr. Tar and Professor Feather. Uh, and I don't know if well, no uh, the the original the original album is actually spread out uh, over the uh, over three sides. Of course, the the original 1976 release was just that one LP set, but this two LP set the uh, the entire album is uh, lengthened. Uh, it says here the 
has speed mastered. Oh, oh and, and, and it's also at uh, 45 rotations per minute. So um, let's hope that it sounds really nice. But yeah, and there, there's uh, a couple of bonus tracks uh, tacked on at the uh, side four. And also the closing track to one in Paradise is track one on side four. So yeah, they, they really stretched the album out as far as they could over the duration of the four sides. So let's hope, uh, I'm really hoping to, I'm really looking forward to uh, hear, well to hear, to hear sound quality of it, obviously. And the albums are in this, just this plain white sleeves. There we have some really nice, well, simplistic, but nonetheless nice looking uh, custom labels. And I'm guessing that the... I'm just trying to... Hmm. This perhaps a bit high. There we go. And this is obviously just well. This is the second LP, but it has the same labels as, as I just shown. So there's no need for me to uh, show that in a more detailed fashion. Yeah, a really nice, really nice 2LP set with the gatefold featuring the two main guys, Eric and Alan. Very neat looking indeed. And now, which is perhaps the main part or the largest part of the box set, uh, the part that features, of course, the CDs, the Blu-ray, but also the book and this oh yeah this looks really really neat and informative i can to begin with i can just show you uh, here we have the let me get a bit better view so that there you have the cds i believe that this down here, yeah, this is the Blu-ray and the other one, I just, yeah, plain CDs. There we have the Mummified Man once again. And uh, I'll just try to get a bit more room to make it easier here. Uh, and yeah, the, the book itself is just... I won't be going through the entire book because that would be, take like... Uh, uh, well, yeah, that... that perhaps wouldn't be a whole lot of fun but uh, I'll just try to show some some of the pages and there's the title with the, the theme of the picture of the mom and the man once again as you can see here it features a lot of information like the picture of the I believe that this is from the master tape. Let me just see here what I have. Uh, so yeah, there we have Eric Wolfson and uh, of course this is uh, this entire text goes to the history of the album and as well as the uh, well as well as the history of how the Alan Parsons project came to be so I would bet that this is a really nice interesting read indeed I really look forward to the little more deeper into this uh, and here's also some uh, project trivia which is pretty interesting I mean I, I can see here that uh, I can see here that they really go into a whole lot of detail when it comes to the trivia and I mean for a great musical 
pants uh, and uh, that really love the history and I just love these small details of album and music that we love. This is just pure gold for me. And of course they uh, uh, they say some stuff that of course was uh, known from before. I mean that uh, uh, Draven, uh, one of the most classic tracks on the album, uh, it was supposedly the first rock song to feature a dig digital vocode vocoder. It was developed by uh, EMI's research laboratories, it says here. Uh, so yeah, a lot, a lot of nice trivia uh, for the songs and uh, singers, the entire, I mean, the, the entire cast that they used for the recordings. And yeah, here we also have uh, an, uh, an Edgar Allan Poe chronology, I mean, detailing his life. So yeah, that, that's also quite interesting. This is as informative, as really as informative as you could wish for. Uh, and here we have a, a much more detailed biography of uh, Alan and uh, Eric. I mean, just tons and tons of history. Here is a interview with uh, with Hazel Wolfson, uh, Eric's wife. And yeah, as uh, as a lot of you probably know, Eric Wilson, Wilson passed away back in 2009, which of course was, well, it was one great loss for the, well, for the music community in general. Of course, interview with Alan Parsons about how he and Eric met, how they, well, how they founded the project and uh, like a lot of, also a, an interview with Eric's daughter, Sally. Uh, I mean, once again, I keep repeating is this is like, uh, and uh, I mean, interviews with uh, David Patton, the guitarist who played uh, on a lot, I mean, most, if not all of the uh, records by Alan Parsons project. Uh, I mean, as I said, and I keep repeating is if, if you want information about the early days of the Alan Parsons project and uh, the uh, this album in particular, I mean, this is the place to go because uh, I mean, just look at the text here. This is as informative as it gets. There is a cool, nice. Uh, uh, this was the billboard that was obviously used for the promotional. Um, as I said, I, I'm not going to go through the... Well, I, I have pretty much go, gone through the entire... Uh, the entire... Or at least the half of the book already. But they're, they're, this is just so cool. And so, once again, so much nice... Uh, informations and trivia and uh, not least uh, a lot of nice uh, a lot of nice pictures a lot of nice image material here's obviously image for the uh, looking i mean representing the classic track uh, draven mm. so yeah really really nice. Here we have some original album artwork, some of the, well, plans for the album. I thought it was just the lyrics, but uh, no, it's like some notes for the album. Here we have some more promo promotional material. So yeah, all in all, a really, truly nice box set and of course it features all of the lyrics in a nice large print a song per page obviously very fitting for the form format of the box itself so to conclude uh, 
and as you can probably already guess, I am uh, extremely pleased with the... Let me just see if I can get everything. in here but yeah a really truly nice box set as I said as uh, a lot of you that are interested in the Alan Parsons project and in this album already knew I'm guessing there are a lot of people already I've gotten this box set because as I said it, ha it has been out for uh, quite a few years now I mean for like uh, not that many but like four years and uh, so yeah a really fine box set indeed and I am uh, very pleased with it so far oh, of course now that's all that's left uh, or I mean that that's not just uh, that's a pretty big task, of course, to go through all of this uh, nice material, which I'm truly looking forward to. But yeah, a really nice box set, and I actually plan to be showing uh, uh, some more box sets in the near future here on my channel. Uh, I uh, have a couple of more, well, at least one which I bought recently, another really nice looking piece which came out last year. Uh, and also I have a box set uh, from my, one of my favorite bands which will be coming out uh, very soon which I'm also looking forward to receiving and uh, showing on here but uh, and also I perhaps also plan to show some box sets that um, some all older box sets which I had from before which also well also deserves to be shown I also have I mean uh, apart from vinyl box sets I also have some CD box sets that are in smaller uh well some in smaller size some larger but uh, most of them or pretty much all of them contain a lot of interesting material which i and as was the case here a lot of bonus stuff such as booklets or a larger book and so on so yeah box sets i truly love them and i believe that a lot of you do too so yeah that was it for this video all good people uh, if you like uh, what I'm doing here, what I'm showing, what I'm talking about, consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you soon again. But bye for now.